All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And I'm delighted to be joined from all the way from Australia in Sydney is Grant Herbert. So it's your morning, my afternoon. And in fact, it's your morning tomorrow, right? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, <laughs> thanks for having me, John. And hey, yesterday uh, on social media, those time hop things come up and say where you were last year. And last year at this time or yesterday, uh, which is your today, yeah, yeah, I was getting on a plane and leaving San Diego. So oh. that's, uh, it's a small world. Yeah, no, it, it is. And hopefully we'll see that starting to happen again soon where, where people are getting out and about and traveling. Um, so, so Grant is the founder and CEO of People Builders. You train coaches, consultants, corporate trainers, and L&D professionals around the globe. Um, but one of the things that you really focus on as a keynote speaker and, and expert is this idea of emotional intelligence. And I really wanted to start off kind of baselining it a bit, Grant, because emotional intelligence is a term that's bandied around a lot. And I think a lot of people think they know what it means, but I'm not sure they really do know what it means. So you being the expert, give your definition. Fantastic. Well, look, I need to tell you up front, I am a subject matter expert in emotional intelligence. I'm definitely a work in progress in its implementation on a daily basis. You know, it's like people expect that, well, this is the emotional intelligence expert guy. He, he must never get upset. He must never react to something. And that's not true because perfection's never the goal. But um, yeah. you're right. Emotional intelligence is something that I sort of heard of. Uh, I have found out since that, you know, looking back at my military career, my corporate career, I didn't have any. But most people have either, you know, heard, might have heard of Daniel Goleman's book or yep. might have heard of some, uh, you know, not quite uh, correct neuroscience around an amygdala hijack or something, but they don't really know what it is. And the other thing that really is challenging is they go, oh, that's the warm and fuzzy stuff. That's the, mm. I don't really need that. That's a great thing if I had it, but I need to focus here on these technical skills, on these doing skills. And to be honest, uh, I found in my own life and in the lives of the people I work with that these are the ones that eat your lunch. These are the ones that if you don't get right, they create all the conflict and stress in your life. So yeah, look, I work with coaches, I work with trainers, et cetera, in expanding what we do around the globe in people builders. Uh, however, what I also do is work in corporations and with individuals to develop their emotional intelligence, indeed their social, and emotional intelligence. And mm. if you like, I can give you a definition of what that is so that your listeners. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think that'd be great. But I just want to pick about. up on what I just want to pick up on one thing you said before you yeah. do that. And I think I think one of the greatest disservices that was ever done was the idea of dividing things into hard skills and soft skills. Because everything that whenever people go things like, oh, this, well, that's a soft skill. Well, you know, what's going to get chucked to the side first or what's going to be like, oh, I don't want to get into all that warm and fuzzy is, is when you name something a soft skill. So I think yeah. as we were talking before we came on, I think there's a lot of nomenclature that probably needs to change. Yeah, look, most definitely. Uh, the word soft skills, and you probably saw the look on my face, your yeah. listeners would have. Um, it does my head in because... These aren't the soft skills, you know, any conversation I have with a room full of people, they say, these are the ones that I have the problem with, you know, uh, mm -hmm. working with myself, firstly, <laughs> and then all these other people, you know, and, and managers get promoted because they've been around for a while. And then they're thinking, yeah, thank you for the promotion. But they're really <laughs> thinking, no, I, I can't mm -hmm. look after myself. And you now want me to look after other people as well. So yeah. look, most definitely. And I think the starting point and where I always start with people is to give them a definition of what it is yeah. because people think they know what it is. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like me, I thought, well, I don't need any of that. I'll be fine. I've got great results coming here. So I'll give you a definition of social and emotional intelligence and I'll break it down to the emotional intelligence, which is the one that most people look at. And so social and emotional intelligence is the ability to be aware of your own emotions and the emotions of others. And the key here is in the moment. Mm. And then to use that information to manage yourself and manage your relationships. So if I break that down, 
The first thing is it's an ability. It's a set of learned skills. It's not something that you're born with or not born with. It's a set of learned skills. So when I first came across this about 10 years ago, I was 48 and I had never done any work in this area. So I started developing those skills. So it doesn't matter age or stage of life, you can start working on these competencies. So the first thing is about awareness. It's about being aware of what are the emotions that I'm going through and what are the emotions that others could be going through. And then the key is using it. You know, having mm. knowledge without using it is frustrating. Yeah. So taking that, what you've learned from those cues and clues from that awareness and then using it to interact better or differently is a word I prefer to use with myself and with others so that I reduce conflict, I have better relationships and less stress. And the emotional intelligence part is the part about self. So being aware of what emotion I'm going through, how it's affecting my thoughts, my behavior, and then shifting my response to it instead of having a reaction, if right. that makes sense. No, that makes total sense. And I think bringing it back to the beginning there, when you say you have to be self-aware first. Okay, so here's the one thing I, I have seen in, in my life and career as the biggest challenge, and even going through it myself, is that journey to self-awareness. That's a tough journey. And it's a journey that, unfortunately, you know, not everybody takes. And then when you have to deal with somebody who's not self-aware, that's even worse. So, so how do you how do you go about go through that process? What advice would you give to somebody if you say to them, okay, if you want to become emotionally intelligent, the first thing you got to do is become self aware, even before you become aware of other people. Yeah, yeah, great point. And, you know, people are unaware that they're unaware. You know, it's <laughs> a terrible term from psychology that unconscious incompetence. I mean, how mm -hmm. you know, what a great word to say to people a great phrase. Yeah. So the, th the key is, and I, you know, the work that I do, most of the gold that I bring people is from my experiential journey, my journey of imperfection, as I call it. And for me, if I look at that and use that, I had to be in a position of pain that right. was big enough for me to go, oh, I need to work out what's going on here because there's plenty of feedback coming from external sources. However, until you get to that point where you go, Hey, I've got to go a bit deeper here. I've got to go inward and I've got to look at, you know, what it is that I'm doing to contribute to my results instead of, you know, blaming the rest of the world. So that's the, per the first point. So when I can get someone to that point, when they come to me and they're ready to make a shift in their life, and that's the key. If we don't have a reason, either a, a pain to move away from or, or a big pleasure to move towards, we're not going to do anything, right? Yeah, yeah. So when they come to that point, the first thing is I operate in three different competencies. So the first one is emotional self-awareness. Because here's the thing. When do you, unless you've been trained in this area, or when does anyone stop in the moment and go, hmm, what's the emotion I'm going through right now? Yeah. We don't do that, right? No, no, we don't. We don't. We, we, we live the emotion and later on we go, hmm. Perhaps I could have done better or reacted better. Yeah. Yeah. And also what we do in that process is that there's a hierarchy of emotion. So, you know, we know when you're angry, you know, because it's, it's, it's written all over you, right? It's written all over me. However, if that anger started from a miscommunication that made me feel confused, mm -hmm. and then it went to the next and the next, and then we eventually got to anger, when we learn to in the moment check in we can go well, hang on a minute i'm feeling confused mm. now here's the thing there are over 2000 words in the english language alone that describe an emotion that you could be going through right now we use right. about six or ten <laughs> you know we're either happy or we're sad yeah. or we're frustrated or we're angry or whatever it is mm. so the first part of awareness and building that emotional self-awareness is to build the vocabulary and go a little bit deeper and go, well, hang on a minute. What happened here? What was the emotion you were feeling here before 
you got to that one that's common and, and, and known to you. So that's the first thing. The second thing then is to look at your assessment of yourself. You know, some people either really beat themselves up mm -hmm. or they put themselves higher <laughs> than they should, right? I, it's funny when I work with leaders all around the world, uh, empathy and achievement drive, they're two competencies that I work in. And unfortunately, in my own experience, when I was in uh, the corporate world and the military world, my achievement drive was way up here and my mm -hmm. empathy was down here. Yet sure. a lot of leaders will go, oh, yes, I'm very empathetic. And, I, and <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I've talked to some of the people who work with you and they yeah. just think you're pathetic. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so there's a, there's a mismatch between what their perception is and what other people's perception is. So there's a different reality. So I help them on that. Mm -hmm. And then the third area, and this, I work in 26 competency, but this one mm -hmm. is the key competency and it's called personal power. This is about mm -hmm. removing the false and limiting beliefs and getting yourself to a position where you know that you've got everything within you and around you to get ahead in life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you don't need to run the imposter syndrome or be a people pleaser and run the performance trap. You can be the authentic you, which by the way, I found is a much easier gig to navigate. <laughs> and out of that personal power, there's more chance that you're going to implement the strategies and the tools that you learn through emotional intelligence. So that's the step one. And I do an evaluation and then I engage the people in what they want to work on, what they want to change. Yeah, I know. I love this because there's a couple of key points here that I just want to draw out for people here is the first one is is the personal accountability. So on your journey to self-awareness, personal accountability is massive because once you realize that your situation today is your responsibility, yeah. you got yourself there, it all belongs to you. Yes, there may have been other circumstances or whatever, but ultimately it belongs to you. You put yourself in that position. And, and people often get afraid of that, but it's extremely liberating when you say actually i'm fully accountable for my life exactly yeah yeah, yeah and, and that's the other one i, I just want with, with that whole situation of i got to a position of pain i had yeah. you know i had many people throughout my corporate career and my military career that would point things out but they were blind spots to me yeah. so and i didn't because of my low self-worth my low personal power I, I couldn't see those or wouldn't see those yeah, yeah. I got to that point where I went, hang on a minute, there, there could be a little bit of credence in what these people are saying, you know? Yeah. And at that point, that's where the journey starts. Yeah, yeah. It's like that old joke, you know, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? You know, none, because the light bulb has to want to change. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the, so there's the, the, the personal accountability. And, and then you said um, the other piece there was, um, was then you know taking the taking the ownership, but the personal power is the other part that I really like what you said because you did reference some things that people suffer from, the as you said the imposter syndrome, the I'm not good and I don't you know I don't really have a lot to offer. I'm going to be found out any minute. I can't uh, you know I'm not I'm not uh, I can't go after my dreams because I don't have that potential within me. But what you're referencing there is. Um, you know, the personal power and then the abundance mindset to say like, you know, there's enough opportunity out there and I have enough skill and experience yeah. to take that opportunity. Most definitely. You know, I remember in my corporate career in particular, um, you know, if you were coming up under me and you looked good, I did whatever I could to make sure that no one saw you because I had <laughs> a lack of certainty about myself and I saw you right. as a threat. So I wasn't a fun person to have as your leader uh, back then. Uh, now, you know, I work with coaches and trainers all around the world and, you know, I want them to go even further than I've been able to go because that means that the message is getting out there, more people are getting helped and I don't really care. You know, they, they called me the emotional intelligence speaker and trainer of the year this year and then COVID hit. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But hey, that's fantastic and awards are subjective. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to have people all around the world to be able to go way beyond anything that I've achieved because that means we're going to be able to make the change that we want to see 
in the world. And right now, with what we're navigating right now, you know, I see so many people whose personal power is creating or lack thereof is creating more anxiety and stress and pain than I'd like to see them going through. Yeah. And, you know, that's why uh, right now we're doing a lot of work to just, you know, talk to people and, and allow them to look at that and go, hey, you, you're not a virus. You're not this situation. You've got mm -hmm. this within you. And to, you know, one of the things I love to do with people is to get them to look back at where have you done things in your life that give you evidence that's contrary to what you're believing about yourself right now? Yeah, yeah. And I, when I, I do that. that, and I was working with a lady in Canada yesterday and another lady in, in Sydney and another lady in India, and the, the three people had exactly the same issue. And when I used that strategy to help them to understand, well, you know what? Yeah, my mum said I'm not smart, and that's what I believed as a kid. But mm -hmm. I've got a degree, you know, I've got every job that I've gone for, I got it, you know, yeah. so giving ourselves evidence that we can rather than believe the false beliefs that we've entertained over the years. Yeah, and, and I think that's so incredibly important, especially now because people are feeling so vulnerable and, mm. you know, there's a lot of mental health issues and stuff out there as a, as a consequence of all this. I, I think it, that's a great piece of advice is for people to look back at what you've achieved, look back at obstacles you've overcome and you'd be amazed how powerful you actually are, how, how the incredible things you have done. And I think that's, that's part of the problem sometimes is, you know, we don't, when we look back, we look back at things that didn't work out. We look back and we sort of regret things instead of looking, as you say, for evidence to prove that we are actually very viable people. Yeah, most definitely. You know, I, if you ask someone what their strengths are, most people will fumble and uh, but then if you ask them what their weaknesses are they'll whip out a prepared <laughs> list <laughs> you know that they carry around all the time and it's look part of that is our society that says don't mm. talk yourself up yeah, yeah. Uh, and most of it though is an internal dialogue that goes on on a daily basis that tells you that you're not who you need to be. Yeah. And, well, and they have, they have statistics. I mean, from psychology today, I read it not too long ago. I can't remember what it was. It was like 67 or 70 something percent of our daily talk is negative. Self-talk is negative self-talk. So to your yeah. point, I mean, we're, we're already doing all of that. So we need to start looking for the other evidence, you know, the evidence of things that we do well, and we need to stop talking to ourselves about the nonsense. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. And this is why I love to bring in, because you talk about psychology, I love to bring in mm. with emotional intelligence, not just the emotional intelligence. I do uh, a combination of bringing in the applied neuroscience behind mm -hmm. it, as well as the positive psychology and what we've learned in that field. So putting those three things together, you know, we can get so much clarity. I love working with people, whether it be a room full of people or an individual. When they get it, they get that aha moment that, wow. You know, and it's something that I would probably take for granted because I do this stuff every day. But to see them get that level of awareness and go, you know what? I'm not a four year old or a 10 year old or, you know, child anymore when those words were spoken to me. Yeah, I'm a yeah. 35 year old adult and it's up to me to define whether I'm smart or not. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah yeah no i think that absolutely because yeah we we carry such luggage and triggers from things in the past uh, that can derail us and there and then we ignore all the stuff in between that absolutely the weight of evidence to the contrary is overwhelming exactly yeah mm -hmm. it's not what happens to us in life it's what we make it mean yeah yeah and i think no, that's why i think no, I was going to say, I think that's why I think coming out of this, I think the kind of work that you're doing is so, so critical. Yeah, look, it is. And I, I, uh, I want more people to see this as not being a soft skill. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, and, and the benefit of hindsight, I, I'm not able to go back there, so I don't want to live in the past. But I really wish someone had told me about this stuff when I was going through my military and corporate career. And let me tell you, I guarantee that the people I was working with wished that I knew that it existed as well, you know, because life's meant to be enjoyed. Here's, here's a yeah. really, I don't know whether it's controversial, that's the word that came to me, statement, but, you know, we can have joy in our life 
even in the middle of a pandemic. Sure. You know, it's allowed, sure. you know, yeah. so, but getting these skills and, and getting an understanding firstly, that they're not something that are uh, nice to have. They are the must haves, you know, unfortunately mm -hmm. in leadership training around the world, it's gone from being what I believe it is. And that's an internal set of characteristics of a leader of who the person is of the leader to a set of skills that we teach people to get people to yeah. do what we want them to do. Yeah, and it's, yeah. you know, so companies will want you to come in and come in and teach communication effectiveness. Well, let me work on the communicator first so that they will actually implement the training that you paid for last year. And, yeah. you know, I think it's a big shift. And if I can see a positive coming out of this time right now, it is more people are having the, the time, the space, the bandwidth and the need to go and look at some of these things. And therefore, you know, people are changing their perspectives. The amount of people that are telling me that they're, and I know this is you and I, we don't particularly like this term, but they're not going, you know, they're, they're staying in the new normal. They're not going back to, you know, all the traveling and the things they were doing before, because this has been great. It's been a, it's been a healing time. It's been a time of reflection, a time of working clo more closely with their family or whatever it yeah. is. So there's a positive, I believe, that's going to come out of this oh. place we're in right now. Oh, I, I think without a doubt, I think this has given people an opportunity to take a step back and look at what's really important in their lives and to and to cherish and experience some of those things maybe they're lacking, as you said, with, um, you know, long commutes and lots of travel. And now you're suddenly being able to see your kid. Well, you can't see your kid off to school. You're able to see your kid at home or have breakfast with them or whatever, have dinner, or, you know, spend more quality time with your with your significant other. I mean, there's so many positives maybe even at the beginning of this maybe all you could do was go out and walk but hey you're going out walking around your neighborhood i mean the amount of people i saw it's a shame it's fallen away now but the amount of people who i'd never seen before you know walking yes. around saying hello to each other so yeah there's there's upsides and i do think people are going to reconfigure their lives coming out of this they're not just going to like flip the switch back to the way it was yeah definitely and big corporations are already changing their real estate footprint Sure. You know, Microsoft came out the other day, I think it was Microsoft came out and said, um, you can work from home forever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, they're not yeah. going to, because, and look, it's funny that it's coming, uh, taking something like this for the people to realize this, but I do a lot of work in the global mobility space. And, mm -hmm. you know, in that community now, people are saying, well, hang on a minute, we're saving millions of dollars on no travel. So yeah. we can do it on a Zoom call. Wow, yeah. big revelation. Um, exactly. Let's do it that way. So it's yeah, it's definitely, and I think that's a good thing because I, as someone who travels the world, traveled the world physically, I now travel uh, online. Um, up until March first, when I flew back into Australia, it's not conducive to having uh, you know a healthy yeah. and mental balance in your life. So. Yeah. No, it's not. And sometimes you have to look back because I used to do a ton of traveling too. And when you reach the elite level on an airline and you think this is great and everything and you're <laughs> getting all the perks and then you stop for a moment and think of what you did to get to that level, the amount yeah. of time away, the amount of time, I mean, all of that. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth no, it. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Well, listen, Grant, this has been fantastic. Uh, Grant Herbert down in Sydney, Australia. Um, all of Grant's information is going to be in this contributor bio below this video. But before we go, Grant, do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, cool. So look, at the end of the day, um, I'd firstly like to start off with the fact that I'm an ordinary guy with an outstanding wife, five amazing kids, three exceptional grandchildren who puts his pants on. Well, I should say shorts. I haven't had, I haven't worn pants for months. Puts his shorts on one leg at a time most mornings. And the reason I want people to know that is sometimes when we find a subject matter expert, uh, we put them up here and we think, oh, well, that's okay for them. But I want to let you know that I'm a real person who mm. is a daily work in progress in what I called before my journey of imperfection. So I take what I've learned through my military career, my corporate career, you know, around personal and leading others. And then in the studies that I've done around coaching and training and emotional intelligence and neuroscience, etc. And I 
do two things right now. So I work with corporations myself and pre predominantly at the C-suite and mm -hmm. next level down. And I also then now, because we've got a message that needs to get across the world, I work with uh, other coaches and trainers around the world to make sure that people builders can, you know, change more lives than just the ones that, that I'm changing. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty well it. If people just go to peoplebuilders.com.au, they'll find out all about me. Um, and while they're there, they can even grab a free seat to the Emotional Intelligence Summit that we've got coming up in just under two weeks time as well. Oh, fantastic. So this is around the time that this goes out. So uh, make sure you check out, uh, make sure you check out that, uh, that summit, because I, like I said, I think this is an important subject area right now. I think it's important work you're doing, Grant. And, and thank you for that. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah.